Welcome, pilots! In this video, we're going to take a look at the limited sleeper cache. Cosmic signatures appear in your probe scanner window, and you must scan them down with probes before you can warp to them. This site will appear as a data site with a level 4 difficulty to scan down. While these sites are somewhat rare, they can be found in high security systems anywhere in New Eden. You'll need a high sensor strength on your probes. This Sestero is fit with a Sisters Core probe launcher and the probes to match, giving it a 113 sensor strength. This is enough to probe down any of the sleeper cache sites. This area has been hidden from prying eyes for years. Now the structure responsible for cloaking the site is damaged, finally allowing for a way in. A quick survey indicates this is a storage site, possibly used to store items collected by sleepers from all over known space. What defenses or dangers lurk inside are uncertain, but the use of both a data analyzer and relic analyzer are required. The entry gate only allows frigate-sized ships through. You will land on a hackable object named the Hyperfluct Generator. Nearby is the damaged spatial concealment chamber mentioned in the opening message. A successful hack will allow you to gain entry into the site. It seems the enigmatic hyperflux generator creates a small wormhole-like rift. But what lies beyond? A Tier 2 data analyzer is highly recommended to hack the hyperflux generator, and a Tier 2 relic analyzer will be highly useful once you're inside the site. The Astero provides an extra hacking bonus, easing the difficulty of hacking the containers found in the sleeper cache sites. The goal of the hacking minigame is to find and attack the system core by revealing nodes on the grid. There are firewall and antivirus nodes that sometimes appear to impede your progress. You can also find tools that help you. Take note of the two numbers on the bottom left of the hacking window. The number on the top is your virus coherence, and the number on the bottom is your virus strength. Coherence measures how much damage you can take before you fail the hack. Strength measures how much damage you inflict on the various nodes. You'll also encounter virus suppressors, which reduce your virus strength until you clear them, as well as restoration nodes, which regenerate the coherence of other active nodes on the grid. I tend to follow along the outskirts of the grid, heading in the general direction of the opposing corner. Keeping to the outer edge helps maintain multiple free pathways should your progress be impeded. Using the tools wisely is the key to successfully hacking these containers. You must activate the strange rift to enter the site. Upon landing, you'll receive a message describing the area. This is a storage site by the looks of it, possibly of sleeper origin judging by the structures around. It is heavily damaged, as if someone, or something, was frantically and forcefully searching through the site, and quite recently at that. Dangerous gases and volatile materials are all around, so care is required in navigating this hazardous place. You will land near a storage maintenance chamber and storage records chamber. Off to your right is a pressure station debris, surrounded by a large cloud. Several other greenish clouds are scattered around the room. Navigating into any of these clouds will steadily damage your ship, so you'll want to steer clear. Scattered around the room are mangled and dented storage depots. These are the containers you'll want to carefully hack to access what is typically referred to as blue loot. Such items can be turned into various science-focused NPC corporations for ISK. The mangled storage depot behind your starting position can be freely hacked at any time. The dented storage depot near the pressure station debris is too dangerous to approach. However, the nearby remote pressure control unit can temporarily depressurize the area. Pressure stabilized. Pressure station environment is safe for the time being and can be approached. Pressure destabilization estimated in 2 to 3 minutes. It's a good idea to keep your local chat window open, as you'll be prompted with messages warning you as the timer counts down. Note that there is a structure near the other dented storage depot named an active force field generator. Approaching this will bump you away from the storage depot. The remote defense grid unit will deactivate the force field, allowing you to approach it. You'll have to navigate to it carefully, avoiding the clouds and the unstable storage silo structures. 
The remaining storage depots can be freely accessed, though you'll again want to approach them carefully. Keep your ship on the opposite side from the clouds and storage silos and you'll stay safe. With this particular run of the limited sleeper cache, I acquired an estimated 40 million in loot. Based on past experience, this is probably slightly higher than the average you might expect from this site. This primarily comes from the aforementioned blue loot, though the science-related skillbooks can contribute as well. These sites can also drop blueprint copies for a variety of polarized modules. Polarized weapons cause your ship to lose all its shield, armor, and hull resists, but they deal much higher DPS. These sites may also drop blueprint copies for a variety of storyline modules, as well as materials that can be used to manufacture them. These are normally only found in the Cosmos missions and hacking sites. Stay tuned to Riley Entertainment for more EVE Online exploration guides. I'm currently also posting guides for all the combat sites found throughout high security space. Some of my past work includes a complete Galent Cosmos guide and a blind playthrough of the Galent epic arc in an Ishker. I also have an interest in amateur game development. Look for the Snake Game dev series on my channel, which led to the release of my first 2D game over on itch.io called Garden of Eating.